Welcome back to the channel. We've got a fresh build for you. 73 Javelin part one. Today, Gary is gonna be showing you all about driveline. Eh? I'll let Gary tell you about it. I'm gonna show you how to put the motor and transmission in there, set the driveline angles of that in the rear end, and then measure for a drive shaft. Now, this is not how to install an AMC Javelin engine. No. This is how Negative. to... What are you showing them how to do? LS3, 4L60E. This is how to LS3 swap your AMC Javelin. Somewhat. With the Control Freaks subframe. Gary will be walking you through driveline angles. And then he's gonna chop up this shock tower so we can fit these coilovers in there. I'll be showing you how to install some drop spindles. And we'll be walking you through how we got this puppy sitting as low as it is. Gary, you ready? I'm ready, you ready. Let's build a Javelin. Okay, we got a new project in here. Uh, this Javelin belongs to Anthony. It's a pretty cool car. Gonna be something a little different. Uh, I've got an LS3. Wasn't supposed to be in here originally, obviously. So, it came to us with the motor mounts kind of sat in place. Everything's been mocked up. It fits super tight. Just barely enough to get a belt in there. So basically, I've just got to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be before it gets welded in place. A lot of times, you don't have the engine just sat in there, centered. On some vehicles, it's uh, offset to one side. In this case, it's set quarter inch this way. So the biggest thing is measuring a point, usually the center of the crank, water pump, whatnot. I did the same thing for the engine and transmission. Both of them are a quarter inch over, just so all the driveline angles are right. A really important thing is to have this guy on. That means the car is level. That's uh, number one, whenever you're setting all this stuff up, you want the, the frame and the car level. So then we'll set the uh, drive line to three degrees down. With this, it was wanting to go uh, two degrees down. So I had to put some shims in. I've got some plates. Okay, I'm back. I got the plates in. Got them installed, painted, and then there it is. Can you see it? Three degrees. You thought I was lying to you. Hey, you want to be on TV? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I've got the motor mounts in, got them welded, got them painted, all that good stuff. Back over here, up under the car, and I'll show you how to set up slip yoke and get it ready for drive shaft measurements. So you want it bottomed out all the way in there. You pull it out three quarters of an inch, and then you measure center line of the slip yoke to center line of the rear end yoke. You always want to have this on the ground so it simulates how the car will be set up while driving. Okay, so our total measurement out from there is one and three eighths. That's where this was five eighths from there. So we're gonna go back there, and measure the size of the U-joint for the rear end. This comes out to 1.188 measure out through there 3.6 so that ends up being a 1350 u joint if you want the drive shaft builder to be your friend you refer to them as 1310 1330 1350 uh, most common with the higher horsepower applications are 1350 you just want to make sure that you've got the right u joint it will cause problems if you don't they'll be mad at you so let me get somebody to help me out from underneath this car and uh, we'll measure it out and show you how to do it. Hey, Logie Bear. Well, I'm just down here with my pal Gary. Yeah, all the way down there. Center to center, that's what your center is. It's just a half moon. Yeah, half moon. Half moon. So let me see that. Meow. Okay, if you look at the center line of that, that is 51 3 eighths. So that's what we're gonna go with, 51 and 3 eighths. All right. We'll take this slip yoke, boink, out to drive shaft Dave, give him that measurement, come back with the drive shaft. If you don't... Okay, before I forget, I need to show you that I set up the rear end. It's basically the two down. Um, that's what we want for this application. I ended up having to adjust the bars. They are adjustable. I'll just loosen this guy up and it'll move the rear end around and that will move the rear end back forwards rotate it do all that stuff all right the next thing that we're gonna do we're gonna try to get this thing lower because uh look at all that 
that's a good bit of distance. We don't want that. We're gonna take the coilovers out, lower it down, see what it looks like. Got it lowered a little bit. It's a little better. Took the coilovers out. You got the lower control arm somewhat parallel. It'll be a little bit, a little bit higher than this. So in the rear, I'll end up relocating those coilovers. In just a second, I'm gonna mock this guy up. See what it looks like in there. Be a huge improvement to this. So in the meantime, I'm about to pull this motor back out because I noticed whenever I was in here, there's a few little repairs that are not gonna work. And it's had body work done to it. So I gotta pull the motor back out, strip this down, repair it correctly, and then I'll be cutting these out. It does not need the shock tower anymore. It's got this control freak suspension that eliminates the shock tower and the need for it. It's got all that going on. So, all right. All right, now that I've got the motor back out of it, these are gonna go bye-bye. It's gonna make them flat, make it look good. It go through and just weld up random holes it doesn't need anymore. Take this down to bare metal. Yeah, good times. Make it look good, be safe. So, cleaned this thing up. All looking good. I got rid of a little monster that was in here. They wanted chicken nuggets. Hey Logan, give me some of them chicken nuggets. So, you're welcome. Well, guess what? I got to go see Dry Chef Dave and look what we got here. We got a Dry Chef custom made. Look at that puppy. Also, Mr. Postman stopped by. Dropped us off some, uh, some parts, some drop spindles, and some springs. This will suit the uh, suit the old dog pretty good. Considering the other ones were like 600, so it'll be too stiff. Joseph over there is learning how to play the drums. Bless his heart. Put some clothes on. Anyway, this little dealie right here, made in the old USA, sets up our back spacing. Let's snow if the wheel is gonna fit in the tire. It's a great tool. Look at what we got here. Look at that big old meat. Quit staring at the meats. All right, so we're gonna make this fit in here some way or another. We're gonna end up narrowing the rear end and then tubbing it out a little bit more. It's gonna need some traction, but uh, this just in, come along with me. We just got these in. Look at this. Look how wide that is. Pretty nice. Comes with a shower cap. Very cool. All right, guys. We are back on the old javelin here, and I have been tasked with replacing our spindles. These spindles look pretty nice. Uh, they just aren't going to do the trick. We need some drop spindles to drop this puppy low. So you just watched me unbox some drop spindles by Willwood. And now we're going to go through the drop spindle and hub installation procedure. For some Willwood drop spindles when you're using a Willwood hub setup. I got her, folks. I got her off. Here she comes. Oh, jeez. Ready? Here we go. Watch out! Cool. Here's a little spindle. That's our new spindle here. Stick it right on. Boink. Ah. Alrighty folks, what I ended up doing was actually taking our little steering arm off of the original spindle. So this is the one that came with the kit. We're not gonna use it. It was not set up for our setup. The original one that we had already had this collar welded to it uh, to allow us to bolt the spindle straight to our steering rack.
That's gonna wrap it up for this week's Javelin episode. That's a wrap for part one. Next time, you'll be with Joseph. He'll be putting together some filler panels for these shock towers and finishing up some metal work. But we are taking this build all the way, so don't worry, you'll see more Javelin in the future. What else is going on? <laughs> We're gonna go to some car shows. <laughs> what car are we taking? The Roadrunner. Let's go. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen our Roadrunner yet, you should go check it out. We have plenty of videos. Build them, drive them. Good guys, Nashville. But you can see us in Good Guys Columbus, where we will be autocrossing the sucker again. We're looking forward to seeing you in Columbus. In other news, behind Gary is a new project. What do you, what do you got here? An Olsenville 442. 65 442, rocking a 6.0 LS. Tremec 5 speed, QA1 goodies up front and Holly Serpentine and fuel management. This is gonna be a great build. We've got so many cars, don't go anywhere. If you're enjoying what you see, subscribe, comment, let us know because we have so many cars and we're gonna keep bringing you build series, project series. Too many cars. Too many cars. See you next time. <laughs>